Hello people, it's I again, and I just want to bring you another video in relation to some cutting edge law stuff going on. Essentially where people are hitting the brick wall of the state and wondering why. And I wondered why for quite some time. And what we have here, we have JC and Sharma taking um, a case before the criminal the criminal branch of the state legislature in, in order to enforce let's say their rights or their what they believe their rights are um, and I've, I've I fell down this trap it's very easy to do because you think about it you know you've got all the police and the judges and the magistrates and all these people set up um, and you know you give them a call they come and respond they take the bad guys away they prosecute the bad guys and hey presto peace and harmony is restored but I, it's not quite as simple as that um, Certain rights that the police have were not rights that were magicked up by the legislature or the statute or, or the state. They, these, you know, and it's quite often referred to that anyone has the power of arrest, so to speak. These aren't exclusive rights to acting police officers. It just so happens that the state has taken um, ownership of arrests, particularly, so that they can train, monitor, and discipline police officers. They can ensure them. Everything's going to be covered and everything's going to be um, answerable centrally to the state in a procedurally correct and tried and tested way. So here we have um, an issue. Now this is in relation to some concerns about a conduct of a man who's seated as a judge. So he's in the position of a judge in very much what I would say um, a criminal or, ro or civil setting, i.e. the Roman, the Roman law settings. And we all know why we don't like the Roman law in the common law lands is because Roman in Roman law, certain peoples had immunities and privileges. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily above the law, but within their societal law, they, they have more, there are more discretionary powers that are afforded to its members in order to keep the status quo of the big society, the really big society, <laughs> bigger than your bowling club, the people who run the state or at least a society that runs the state or likes to take ownership of it. So just um, looking at this video and relating it to crime, we're going to relate it to law, we're going to relate it to, because this will eventually uncover the corruption or the perceived corruption of people in positions of authority and responsibility and if you like some sort of oath to the constitution, oath to the state, oath to the queen, oath to whoever you want you know, the, the Michelin man, whatever. So whatever oaths they have or perceive to have, and then you don't get the response or you don't get the inquiry that you, you wish for. You don't get the, um, the desired effect. So, you know, you immediately think, oh, corruption, you know, bad guy, look, evil, evildoers, wrongdoers, and you call them out for being so, uh, which may or may not be correct, but I just want to put my spin on it. And we'll just look at here. So this is this is JC. He's gone to a magistrate's office. And now this is absolutely carbon copy of pretty much what my experience was when I go to these uh, these criminal offices that deal with like the criminal element of the law. Um, the lovely, lovely people. They are very lovely. They um, they they know how their system works, and they're not really allowed to tell you or advise you about how their system works because it's kind of not really cookies <laughs> although you are an ingredient when when called upon <laughs> you're not a participant so, so just, you're not um proprietary there we are that might be a better word to to what's going on in these in these, these criminal courthouses that deal with public criminal law and she's a lovely lady she's given them the attention that she needs and she just advises them the best that she can and uh, let's have a look all right then we can just walk over there. Right to the sheriff's office. Uh, right and right. if I could talk to them and fill out a little complaint, you can come right back over here. Well, come over here. The officer will the... charge on your behalf. They have to start an investigation. Nothing's going to happen right this minute. Okay. Right, so go over there. The officer has to start an investigation. Nothing's going to happen here this minute. The way that I see that the criminal society are contracting with you is like if you don't have a lawyer, if you don't have, like, what would it be like a criminal lawyer, or you don't have a police officer who can come in and start the process on your behalf, 
there's nothing that they can do for you because we require you to be represented in our system so that we can bring the parties to account it via this representation system um, so that everyone can get the game on in accordance to our laws and our societal court codes for any breaches of the peace or or well criminal activity now while we're on the, on the issue of crime um, I was very kind enough to come or someone was very kind enough to uh, give me access to a few law books at a university um, they were going to be thrown out and he said look if you would like a law book why don't you take one I said okay I'll have that one that one and that one I just happened to pick a, cr a criminal law book so this is kind of a book that a student going into the criminal law profession would, would use as a reference book um, I'll tell you what it is, it's called Criminal Law, it's an Oxford Criminal Law, Text Cases and Material, 6th edition, Jonathan Herring. Um, and I thought, hey, for shits and giggles, let's read their code book. So I got to about page, well, it's not page numbered, but anyway, I got to like one. <laughs> what is a crime? Okay, and here is a... You know that they're highlighting on the fact that there are like crimes that we know which is like murder rape arson theft things like that you know and then there's also other elements to the crime the criminal which was like behavioral crimes and it goes in here a very simple definition which kind of spells it out you know they're not lying to you these people they're just saying look this is this is this is what we define a crime as and it, it says here um, Definition of crime, but in P. Dot Kane and J. Dot Conner, Conner, Conahan, um, it says there is no simple and universally accepted definition of crime. So why is it so hard to define? Right. So there's no universal, universally accepted definition of crime. So when I read that in this book, I thought, well, I better put this book down, and it's a load of bullshit. In the modern criminal law. They can't define their own definition of crime because essentially it's morphosized into, into various elements, which I'll come to in a minute. A feature that probably reflects the large and diverse range of behaviors that have criminalized, which have been criminalized by the modern state. State, the people in charge of the administration of the state, so the government, if you like, in some respects. Uh, the state, you know, state has, a, I've been through that in another video, state is, is a very morphic word, there's lots of different meanings and uh, synonyms for state, but essentially criminals are, criminal law is defined by the state. It is now widely accepted that crime is a category created by law, that is, so by law, they're, they're now redefining it, that is a law that most actions are only criminal because there is a law that declares them to be so. Uh, so this must be a starting point for any definition. Most modern definitions of crime fall into two main categories. There's moral crimes and procedural crimes. Moral crimes and procedural crimes. So what would a moral crime be? A moral crime would be coming back to the Ten Commandments and those very specific moral crimes as we know from the good book. And then you have procedural crimes, which is crimes that come and go as and when the fashion dictates. And to highlight my point in that respect, I go back again to this page, which I've already been through in a previous video, but it's come back again, so we might as well do it. So law, the Saxon definition, is uh, from Lego or Legando. Sorry, let, Latin is Lex, from Lego or Legando. Choosing, yeah? So law is a choosing, so choosing your laws, yeah? You've got to choose which laws you're going to bind yourself to which also comes down to man being a free agent, and the free agent of man um, loses his free agent nature when he starts binding himself to societies and clubs and associations and tribes and peoples and countries. Oh, whenever you go anywhere, you know, when, you, you know, uh, when in Rome, do as the Romans, yeah? Um, if, if you join your local swimming club or a gym or, a, 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 I don't know, a, a rifle range, a shooting range, you have rules that you have to abide by because you're entering into someone else's domain okay so or uh, someone else's property whatever you want to call it the rule um, and that's actually here so a choosing so law is actually a choosing here or rather um, a, f a form of binding yeah so you're kind of choosing to bind your person yourself the man the free agent that can walk across planet earth unimpeded uh, the rules 
um, the rule and bond of men's actions, or it is a rule for the well-governing of civic society to give to every man that wish doth belong to him. Now, that's relating to property rights. The laws of England, now again, these are capitalised laws of England, so the laws of England as we define them, or we, we control it, are divided into three parts. So one is the common law, which is the most ancient and general law of the realm, the common and common to the whole kingdom, uh, being appropriate hitherto and having no dependence upon uh, any foreign law whatsoever. That's nice. Statutes or Acts of Parliament. Now now we're talking about, um, so that's probably one would be the moral code there in, in, in one respect, like the book, the Ten Commandments and the Christian, the Judeo-Christian beliefs. And two, the Statutes or Acts of Parliament. And going back to the definition I just read you, uh, it said about if it's a moral or um, procedural so here, statutes and acts of parliament made and passed by the king. So the, the state or the government or parliament or whatever you want to call these people, statutes and acts of parliament are passed by, you know, passed by, they're put in front of the king, the laws and the commons in parliament being reserved for the government to provide against new mischiefs arising through the corruption of the times. So I don't know what a corruption of the time, like hate crime at the moment would be like, you know, the freedom of speech and this hate crime nonsense. So, you know, people calling people rude words or offensive words or you putting up a video on YouTube about you're not training your, your dog to be a, a Nazi dog, salute, whatever it was with Count Bankler did. These are what we get, mischiefs arising through the corruption of the times. So this is where the, the, the um, procedural things are being um, enacted via statutes in order to to just you know ebb and sway with whatever fashionable party comes up and down because they know things are going to come and go with the fashions of the of the generations if you will so that you know that's what the statute is basically there to to amend or, or to or to respond to those changes uh, and by this the common law is amended where defective yeah so if there is any if if the if the ten commandments in some respects is defective by not covering new evils or new mischiefs arising through the corruption of the times, then the common law, the statute law, can be tweaked in order to um, suppression of these public evils. Now, though, where the common law and the statute law uh, law concur or interfere, the common law shall be preferred, which I would put here as a good book. Now, it's just my interpretation and opinion, but you know. Don't take that. I'm not. Le I'm not legally trained, but that's how I would. Uh, how, how I would interpret it. And then the three. I don't know if I went over this in much detail in my previous video, but there is actually a number three here. Particular customs. Yeah, you might even say peculiar customs, or individual customs, or group customs, local customs, all kinds of customs. But they must be particular, for a general custom is part of the common law of the land. Bang. The people, the land, the common law of the land. So you have your own localised laws. And this is why in modern society so much effort has been done to uh, sterilise localised customs. Bring everyone on board to this kind of common law and and the, um, the statute law. So that a more Roman style, I would say, I think the agenda would probably be to... to to get rid of this kind of customs-based common law and have the common law move over to a pseudo code law, it will still be common law, common law land, but essentially it'll be a, it'll be a common law land where the customs are code land, code laws, or Napoleonic code laws that just basically are the custom. So essentially, it's common law, but it's actually operating as a code law. That's how I see it. Anyway. So that's where we're going back to this. So, so when you when you go into these offices and you start reading their statutes and their criminal procedures and all this other kind of stuff, you know, this lady is not lying to you when she's saying, look, you're going to need to get someone who's competent. If you want to hold someone to account, you know, you can, you're going to have to do it in such a way that you're competent to come here and not fuck up the case. Because if you come here and fuck up your case, you only get one shot at it quite often. You know, if you if you come and you've got any kind of errors or, or procedural errors, inaccurate inaccurate procedures or you know wrongful filings whatever and you're going to make a horse uh well it's not it's not we use bad language you're going to make a, a train crash of, of a case then that's your that's your one and only chance thrown out by the judge and you won't be able to get justice so there's kind of like you know two two elements to why she's saying get a lawyer or go to sheriff get someone who has law enforcement you know 
clout behind them so that if you wish to seek justice through our system it needs to be done in such a manner nothing's going to happen this minute other than you filing a report well did you file a report? She say, hey, I'll file, okay, I'll file a report. Let's do that. Nothing's gonna happen right this minute. The only ways that I'm aware of is that, um, oh, actually, let's, um, let's bring it back to something else. That reminds me, I have this thing here, which is something I read. I was going through some, oh, I can't remember. It, 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 was, it, was, a, it was a piece I found on the internet. And, you know, there's so much reading and the research I do. It comes in from all over the place. But when I saw this, I thought, I'm having that. So here I'll share it with you guys. So this is a this is a a, a judge um, giving some comments in relation to the, the case there. Lord Wilberforce uh, in Gourier versus Union of Post Office Workers uh, summarised it. So the individual now individual is a rubbish word because individual literally means the thing. <laughs> yeah, the individual means thing. It doesn't mean a, a man or a woman or. A, a private person it just means anything or a thing or something the thing in such situation who wishes ah now things that aren't living can't wish so now the, the individual the thing has presumably become some sort of living man or a living entity so the individual in such situation who wishes to see the law enforced has a remedy of his own he can bring a private prosecution okay great you can bring a private prosecution the judge is actually saying that this histor historical right, which goes back, right back to the earliest days of our legal system, our legal system, yeah, though rarely exercised, quite, tr quite rightly, rarely exercised, as it, if you're able to exercise your legal right that they will give you to bring a private prosecution within their society, you know, for this open and free access to justice, though rarely exercised in relation to indictable offences, remains a valuable constitutional safeguard against inertia or partiality. Now, partiality is probably the key thing here, is that the, you're, you're experiencing buddies who are looking out for each other. You've got, you've got a judge and two attorneys who all seem to know each other and all seem to be chummy. Yeah, so you've got partiality going on there. You've got a magistrate here at a court building who's trying her best to kind of palm you off to say look you need to do this in another way or you're not you're not approaching her in an appropriate way or in a competent way that gets her to to be uh, to to uh, perform and then um, and then which we'll now see you would testify that it happened mm -hmm. when you went to court because like I said the officer yeah. would charge on your behalf with us and then it would end up in court and you would go to court and testify yeah because it would be the state versus some knobhead yeah it wouldn't be it wouldn't be JC or shaman versus knobhead it would be um, it would be um, it would be the state prosecutor would be bringing a case on your behalf against said knobhead uh, now obviously you can see knobhead is part of the society that administrates the system so the likelihood of getting a well you would need to have a jury this is why jury trials are so important or trial by juries god look at my, look at my trial by jury is so important so that the the, the um the legal society that administrate this the state justice system isn't being partial this is why the jury the, the trial by jury is such a cornerstone of the justice system um, because then you don't have to rely on anyone within their own society trying to bury their own societal member who they may have gone to school with may have golf club sessions with you know may get invited to their birthday parties and new year's parties and all this kind of stuff so that's why you have to keep partiality out which is where the trial by jury is so the way that i'm seeing what she's saying is that you know you need to bring someone to bring this case to us we will look at it we're obviously going to be honorable and try and process it but you have you can't you know for you to do it yourself you're going to mess up you know from her point of view i can see how she said you're going to mess this up we have a very specific system in place here so that we can operate lawfully and therefore if you know we can't break codes we can't you know there's probably insurance policies that they can't do this that and the other um so there you need to get yourself a public prosecutor 
and, and he's saying about testimony, when do I give testimony? Obviously, testimony would be presented by JC here to the jury in the case when he's called forth as the witness. So he's the witness that witnessed what was going on in the court that day. And he obviously can then say, I was also aggrieved. And, and, and the prosecutor will bring this all on his behalf and he would be allowed to enter court and testify to the truth of his, of his um, grievances. As to what actually happened. So I can't swear out a warrant like an officer has to investigate. If it's a felony charge, correct. Okay. All right. Right, there she is. So there she goes. She said, if it's a felony charge, correct. You have to have someone who's an official, someone who's insured, uh, because, he, like I said, if you fuck up this pr prosecution, guess what happens to all your stuff, JC? Okay. Thank you for explaining that. All right. Thank you. Nice Thank you. <laughs> so lo and behold, he goes to the police, police department. Truly a long walk. Oh. And this is this is where it's a bit. Sh this is where the the shocking side of it is. It's more like you've gone from a nice customer service magistrate lady, and it's gone into like the law enforcement, like the force side of it, where um, you know the right man for the right job to keep the to keep the system running. This this is the this is as far as I'm concerned a bit a bit of a dubious encounter. Just a short walk. Here we go. So we're in the sheriff's the sheriff's um, office. If I, if I was JC here, I wouldn't have shown him the paperwork. I would have tried to speak to him a bit more like, you know, the paperwork can be in your back pocket and actually just like, you know, build up a report with this sheriff. Um, I don't think it would have made a difference, but at least, you know, look him in the eye. Don't don't throw papers in his face. Just say, hey, hey, buddy, what's your name? Dave? All right, Dave, how you doing, Dave? They've had a bit of a problem and you're not going to believe what happened to me. I mean, I'm a bit surprised, but I went into a court and I got put in prison for like doing nothing. I was helping an old man stand up. He didn't say much at all. And he chucked me in prison now. You know, I'm all for law enforcement, but I don't agree that I've ever done anything. I've never done anything. I don't agree with the judge that I've done anything wrong. And he's obviously used his powers um, uh, overbearingly on me. And I spent 48, 48 hours in prison for no particular reason other than helping an old guy stand up. Yeah, so sorry for the bad quality. Obviously, this is ghetto style recordings. So, anyway. All right, here we are. It's a bit better sound now. So the, the sheriff just said to him, I'm going to tell you something right now. What, what did you say there? I don't know, something I'll be polite to you about a crime being committed, but then he changes it around. So he's like, okay, thanks for reporting the crime, but now look at this. However, there's a crime being committed here. You're about to be charged with trespassing. There's a crime being committed here, you're trespassing. So not only have you gone to the, the courthouse where the magistrate is and you've asked for assistance, and they've said no, 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 for the reasons I've already explained, they've now said you need to go to the sheriff's department and you need to speak to the sheriff and get the sheriff to uh, issue out a warrant on your behalf or some sort of police officer, law enforcement officer. And now the law enforcement officer that he's gone to has just said, you know, regardless of whatever you put in front of him here, he says, look, you're actually committing a crime now. You're committing a crime of trespass. But the thing is, trespass is so income. You know, it's so wide ranging. I said, "Oh, really? What kind of trespass am I doing?" Where our hands are tied when it comes to the district court judge, and he's got all the power to let court in. There's nothing else I can do for you. Okay. The only thing I can advise you is, you don't like how this judge conducts business. We're gonna fight against him when he comes up for election. And that's actually a reasonably decent thing. You know, the sheriff says you don't like how this judge operates. You got the. You know, it seems like from his point of view, you need to elect him out, or you stand up against him, which is interesting. 
And also, I think sheriffs are elected, aren't they? I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure sheriffs or commissioners. I don't know how it works in America, but I'm sure there's a there's a system of election going on. But you know, you're now relying on the, on the fair fair elections, which I'm sure they are. But you know, hmm. if if the judge and the, and the sheriff and the magistrate seem to be, um, well, I wouldn't say the magistrate, but obviously the judge is has has done some dubious things in the courtroom and now the sheriff the sheriff is pretty much i ain't going near that <laughs> which is which is exactly contrary to what the sheriff is supposed to be the sheriff originally in england was the person he was the person who was who is you know almost like a judge dread kind of figure you know he is his his status his standing his title is above all others so whether you're a lord, a baron, a duke, or whatever, if you've done a murder and you killed someone, that sheriff will drag your ass into the fucking courtroom and you'll answer for your crimes. It, the sheriff, that's why the sheriff is so powerful in the States, and it was so powerful, and it, well, it is still kind of powerful in England, but they've kind of mothballed the, the, the actual role. It's been mothballed because it's probably inconvenient for business purposes. But um, in England, the, the, we still have like uh, sheriffs as ceremonial and a lot of these sheriff positions are actually these imagine all the lawyers and legal people um actually op holding these sheriff titles that's basically how it is in the england at the moment so at least in america you, you get to elect or I, I don't know you have a more freer way of um, having your sheriff serve whereas in england they go to the royal courts of justice and then they get appointed by the legal society so the legal society appoint the sheriffs that are there to hold their own all people in all societies to account Hmm. I'll, I'll pick up those bones in another video. But that's just my own gripe. But here it's interesting, isn't it? You go to a law enforcement agency expecting some sort of, you know, hello, I've got a grievance. I think I believe it's criminal. I think it's in your code book. I've been told to come here by the magistrate that you need to bring a case on my behalf and I'm reporting it here. I'm willing to swear and give evidence to the, to, to the truth of the matter. And now both the cops, even the, the sheriff and the, I don't know, whoever this guy's in the background here, have said, uh, mate, we, we can't touch a judge, which is not true. The sheriff touches everybody any wrongdoer and these without fear or favor that sheriff you know this is the whole point if you it doesn't matter who what was just the president of obama or clinton or or trump or anyone like that well, a woman comes running in here and says trump just raped me oh no 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 i can't go near trump this is this is him derelicting in my opinion he's being derelict to his duty here and he's fobbed you off with a threat of arrest because you're trespassing He's doing another crime, you know. What I mean, that's 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 not on as far as I'm aware. So actually, in all of this, the, the person that I see as being the biggest issue is this sheriff is is has got is lacking the balls to put his job on the line to do the right thing. <laughs> yeah. So so you know he can hold you. The, the judge can hold you in contempt without without whatever for 29 days so he just said that but the problem is um i think i think if i've i've, I've read in my other books is uh, uh, imprisonment or false imprisonment wrongful imprisonment misimprisonment whichever way you, you want to define it is is a uh, is a tort it's uh, it goes down the civil so what what jc should be doing is opening up a civil claim against the judge who did this to him get a judgment against the judge for the time spent at his pleasure and then you get compensated for two days in in prison and that, so it's not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go down the criminal route personally because you know it's 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 a minefield of legal uh, professionalism required. Not that you can't do it. You can bring up a private prosecution as as we've just uh, we've just read here by the judge's um, comments. Uh, but the problem with doing this is that you have to be pretty slick at their system in order to get it through. Uh, and then, in England in particular, you then have the issue of, let's say you're taking someone like the Prime Minister to, to, to private prosecution for some reason, because you think that her handling of Brexit is a, is a defraud of the people at large, or the population, or the citizenry, or the, or the voters, whatever you want to call these things, these individuals. <laughs> um, um, so, you know, you bring a private prosecution against uh, Theresa May, then... You know, if you if you can't hold, if you can't make that bucket hold water because you didn't invent the bucket, and it's in, invariably got holes underneath it. You know, things like the uh, was it the director of public prosecutions can step in and take over your case, and if it has some, they have this like means testing thing. If it's not in the public interest, if it's you know blah this that and the other, you know they can quietly just dispose of it, and that's why they have this. They 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 withhold the right. To say actually that's a lovely case and it's completely true, but you're not going to uh, you're not going to execute those rights through our system against the, the larger society, our larger society at whole. That's how I'm looking at it. Okay, 
and I know it's a bit of a it's a bit of a mind a mind job to get your head around this. Um, saying what you mean when I call the police, what I'm actually doing is invoking. Yeah, invoking would be probably the right word. Um, the services of a of a of a corporate body that is essentially in charge of the state and have duties and obligations to the to the to the monarch, obviously, because it's this is all her property. But the way that they run their state is as they as their codes and rules um, fit. Now that's more in England, but it's England, America, as far as I'm concerned, the legal society is the same. <laughs> You might think you live in England, you might think you live in America, but the legal society never went anywhere. <laughs> you just have to look at the city of London and look at Washington, D.C., and you think, hmm, that's very similar. Christopher Wren style in Washington, D.C. But anyway, I digress. Now, is there anything else I wanted? Oh, did I go to this? Did all this, didn't I? Oh, yeah, here we go. Here's just, a, just another little um, thing here about the municipal laws. So municipal laws and municipalities. Now, when you hear this, this is, this is back into Roman Roman law, and this is where Blackstone divides the municipal law of England into two kinds. So the, the Roman law, the lex written, and the, so the lex script and the lex non scripta, uh, which is you know the written law and the, and the, and the unwritten law. Non scripta or unwritten law includes not only general customs, so that would be the, the, the element three in the previous section I've just been through, um, but also the common law properly so called. So that is the common law as in relating back to the, to the, to the, the book should we say, the Christian belief, Judeo-Christian beliefs, but also particular customs of certain parts of the kingdom. So, and there's plenty of those in historical times, all kinds of weird customs um, observed only in certain courts and jurisdictions, so local, very localised courts and jurisdictions. Laws have also sp special significance wherein it is taken for, taken for that which is lawful with us, and not elsewhere, as, oh, this is interesting, as tenant by the courtesy of England is called tenant by the law of England. Now, this is an interesting wordplay here. So, we're, the, we're a courtesy of England. So, think of someone giving you a courtesy, common courtesy. So, someone giving you a courtesy of England is called tenant by the law of England. So, the courtesy, someone giving you a, a, like a, like a, uh, a buy, a pass, you know, a freedom. Um, is now defined in in the system here as uh, now that courtesy has become a law because you bound, you've been bound by it, as I've previously mentioned here about how how free agents, man being a free agent, binds himself to certain to certain um, processes and stuff. Which is when you're filling in your claim forms and things like that. If you're if you're filling in a legal claim form, you're binding yourself to the civil procedure rules. Or if you're going into a criminal claim, you're binding yourself to the criminal procedures rules. So these are rules and, uh, of, the, of a society that is the state, essentially. So now we've, we've established that JC's had a particular run-in with the state. And I was like, you know what, isn't it funny? Uh, I once looked at where do you report, you know, corporations. I don't know if you have this in America or elsewhere, but, you know, monopolies. We had something, we used to call it the Monopolies and Mergers um, Commission or something like that, which uh, changed to the Financial Markets Ombudsman. Or something. I don't know what it's called now, but it's all it's all a buy the buy because, you know, I was thinking, wouldn't it be funny with all the legal monopolization of, of society or, or states or country, countries, I suppose you could say, the monopolization of countries' administration, I wonder if I can report the legal society to the Monopolies and Mergers Commission. And I was like, oh, let's look at that. And anyway, I looked at the Monopolies and Mergers Commission, and lo and behold, it's run by the legal society. So I thought, well, I'm going to report the legal society to the legal society. Yeah, I didn't do that. So anyway, going on from here, I went on to, um, let's have a look at this. This is, beep, beep, beep. this is how to report corruption. Okay, great. But then it says in the UK. So if you wish to contact these UK embassies about corruption in the UK, this is how you do it. So don't do this. If you've got a gripe about the UK, then you don't contact the UK to say, hey, UK, you're really bad. It's like Al Capone, you're a criminal. Stop doing it. OK, I'll stop doing it tomorrow. You know, that's what you that's the kind of answer you're going to get. But this is a Transparency International UK fighting corruption worldwide. So this is again, this is another I don't know if this is misdirection or deviation, but this is but it was also an official, correct, proper way for their society to maintain their status quo. But yeah, good luck. Um, so we have all this kind of whistleblowing and corruption at the in work in the office place. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to breeze over this very lightly. So, so we go. You you email. Um, oh, that actually looks like maybe possibly a third party. 
uh, financial corruption, you go to the uh, public inquiries at gsi.gov.uk. Lovely. So if there's some sort of banking corruption or financial trading corruption, stuff like that, they love all that stuff. Oh, there's another one here, gsi.gov.uk. Uh, action against fraud. Uh, you report to the police, and obviously the police are a branch of the UK government. Um, a financial ombudsman. Uh, that's the independent, yeah, set up by the UK government. Yeah, interesting, Gov independent. Um, government corruption, um, ombudsman.org, make a complaint, that's interesting, so that's not, uh, well I'll look into that a bit more, but the, the gist of what I'm trying to tell you here is that a lot of these organisations actually, oh look, government corruption in Northern Ireland goes back to the ombudsman.org.uk, okay, uh, Scottish as well, commissioners of public, so who set up these things, I mean is the government setting these things up or are they, like, is the GSI.uk, commissioner of public appointments? So, so you tell you tell the uh, the government about their own public appointments. Independent complaints reviewer. Hmm. GSI.gov.uk. Okay, fair enough. So it's all emailing in through the same people. Police corruption through the government. So that you're basically all of these concerns that you have are going back to the person who's essentially got the got the um, the system not working as it should be, or has the corruption within their societal uh, and then societal organisation. Now, legal corruption here again. You go to so it's interesting how the legal corruption now has its own category. So the legal corruption's on the same page as all of this. So this is almost like an acknowledgement that the legal society has legal persons who operate their society on their behalf as solicitors, if you like. They are soliciting the people to come and join their little party as pimp daddies. <laughs> and then housing corruption, it all comes back into the uh, all UK housing ombudsman. Now I was like, ombudsman, aren't they? Isn't it interesting? Yeah, so I mean take this with a pinch of salt there's a lot of these a lot of these um corruption allegations will be going back to the bodies that are actually your may you may be directly or indirectly indirectly accusing of being corrupt notice there's no judicial element on that because the judicial the judiciary is nothing to do with the uk technically oh yeah ombudsman yeah let's come back ombudsman yeah so i was looking at the word ombudsman i was like well let's see what latin word this is an ombudsman actually isn't a, isn't a Latin word. It's from Swedish. Ombudsman, literally a commission man. So I was like, well, there must be a man who's making these commissions. So who is that man who's making the commissions? Maybe I might phone him up one day and ask him specifically. So who is the man who makes the commissions? Um, which hears and investigates complaints by individuals against abuses of state. There we are. So who is this man? Cognate from the Old Norse word, blah, blah, blah. Around from... Blah, blah, blah. It's interesting that the ombudsman is not a Latin. I don't think it's Latin, is it? Pi. No, it's not. So it's not a Latin word. So hang on a minute. Why is the ombudsman a non-Latin, a non... Um, what was that? What I just talked... What's it called? Non-municipal, non-Roman law word is used... Or a word about Latin roots is being used for the um, authority for these organisations of the government. Which the UK, being a corporate body, is um, and actually that's something I, I skipped over as well. Particularly the oh here we are here we are financial corruption particularly right. So serious fraud office where there is an apparent criminality undermining UK PLC. There we go. Commercial or financial interests. Right now, I mean that's them spelling it out for them <laughs> in general and in the city of London. In particular, because obviously this all, all roads lead to Rome and the city of London being our Roman masters, you know, the Roman the Roman branch of the, the code law that all these lawyers and solicitors and societies all stem from. They all have the worshipful the worshipful members of this city of London, which operates as independently as it can within the Kingdom of England. But I thought that was that was, this 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 little bullet point here gives most of the game away in my opinion but anyway so there we are that's that's my little two pence and why the criminal system might be like batting your head against the criminal system i'm not saying you can't access it and obviously they're saying you can access it but holy moly macaroni um according to said judge indictable offenses you probably want to go back to the magistrate and say i wish to i wish to do an i wish to lay an indictment can you help me fill in an indictment because I'll bring you back to the look at my indictment, uh, the video where I went to the local um, archives of ancient or historical indictments done by people, 
who have had wrongs done to them, the indictments were written out by the lawyers, and literally they would they would have the testimony given, or they'd have the the information, the lay information would be taken from the person who who experienced the wrongdoing, and it seems to me in particular that it was a pre-formatted piece of paper, right? Because you know you're a dumb shit, you haven't studied Latin, you don't know our system, our laws, our codes, our procedures, our words, in terms of art. So therefore, you give it to you, tell us what's happened. We'll fill in the blanks on this form, and then we'll get the we'll get the show on the road. You call in your witnesses, and then lo and behold, hopefully at some point you'll get the justice that you believe the state owes you. Yeah, makes more sense. But I think the key word here, what the judges said, is you can bring a private prosecution. And you need to look at something here called indictable offences.